PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at an Intel Core i7-3820 Sandy Bridge CPU. This is the Sandy Bridge E. It's a newer one. Came out earlier this year. There are even newer Intel Core i7s out there, but this one here doesn't cost as much. Okay, so that's why this one is a very interesting CPU. It's halfway in between a whole bunch uh, in the lineup from Intel. And um, it, it's got quite an interesting um, bunch of capabilities, which I'm going to show you guys in a moment. But again, if we're looking at what is the difference between this one, the last one, and whatever it is that's coming out, well, let's take a closer look because this one here, while it's not a uh, unlocked CPU, you can still do a lot with it. Okay, and I've got a nice uh, Asus Rampage uh, 4 board that I'm going to be testing this on. Now, here's a chart gives you a good comparison between the previous generation and the newer ones um, that are out. It has 10 megs of level 3 cache as opposed to 8 from the previous generation or as opposed to the extreme, you know, X or K unlocked versions which have 12 or 15 megs. But then again, I mean, those cost all the way up to $1,000. So... Uh, you know, this one here hovers around the $299 now, uh, US, on uh, Newegg.com, just uh, in case you guys are wondering. So, LGA 2011 socket, obviously. So, that's what we're looking at here on this machine. Um, I've got it running at defaults. So, default means 3.6 gigahertz. With turbo enabled, it goes up to 3.8, but the multiplier is... Um, unlocked up to a certain point, which is really 44. So you can increase the multiplier up to 44 only and then increase the bus speed to uh, overclock it. And I'll make a separate video about that. But right now, things are running on default. You can see the temperatures there, very acceptable, um, quite low, running out full load. Um, I have no complaints regarding that. A lot of people are wondering, you know, is it worth spending if it's not unlocked? Well, watch my second video and then that might convince you on what are the capabilities for unlocking this and how close does it come to an extreme uh, CPU. Here are the um, types of memory, the Patriot memory that I've got in here running at very high uh, bandwidth as you can see and the 7950 um, graphics card. Now when it comes to benchmark we start off with the ADA 64 cache and memory benchmarks to give you a good idea on the read, write, copy the latency, the speeds, running again at default uh, clocks without overclocking anything, okay, so you get a good idea. I will overclock it, of course, later on to show you. Um, here, when we run the CPU Queen results, very, very high results, as you can see there, running at defaults, very close to the extreme processors, the Core i7s uh, that have six cores, but then again, uh, this isn't overclocked, and um, we uh, can get more out of it, okay? And I'll show you that, like I said, in my next video, my part two. So not bad so far, considering that it's a $299 uh, CPU as opposed to paying, uh, you know, much more for the other ones. Now, looking here at some synthetic benchmarks, the PC Mark um, 7 benchmark is a system uh, overall benchmark, okay? Obviously, if you look at my other reviews, I also ran PC Mark 7. You can compare this and get an idea on how overall it performs. Same thing with 3D Mark 11. Gives you a good overall, but it's more about the GPU here in this case. I like 3D Mark Vantage because it actually separates the score. You can see here the CPU score is 26054. That's what we're looking at here, okay? So if we look at the CPU score only, okay, forget the other ones for now, uh, and put that in a chart, and uh, you can see here, basically on this list, how it compares halfway through in between all the other generations, the older ones and the newer ones, so you can get a good idea. And keep in mind the price point, how much it's priced compared to the latest and greatest from Intel. Now looking at the games, again, I'm going to do something totally different here. I'm going to put two monitors instead of three, uh, or instead of one actually, and show you how it performs at a, at a higher resolution, right? Because we want things on high settings, ultra settings. Uh, obviously, when we run a system like this, we don't want to run things on low or medium. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do here. I just hooked up two monitors and uh, have it on a widescreen uh, display here going on. And things are very smooth. Obviously, if you have it just at uh, regular on one monitor, 
it's going to be fast, right? It's going to be the frames per second are going to be even faster than this uh, proportionally. But right now you can see here, this is really good considering that everything is on the highest settings and um, no complaints from me so far, right? Especially once you see the uh, results from the overclocking. Now, um, for those of you that uh, have a CPU like this, an Intel Core i7, uh, and you haven't overclocked it, you can take a look at my next video. I go through the uh, setup and exactly what it is that I did to overclock this machine to 4.75 gigahertz stable. Okay, and again, remember, it's not about overclocking like crazy. It's about overclocking it right. So again, comment below. Let me know what you think. And um, I'd like to thank Intel for providing it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching.